Okay, so the project that we're doing today in this video is an electric pit bike. So annoyingly, the microphone wasn't plugged in properly to start with, so I'm gonna have to give you a little voiceover. Here's the pit bike. I got it off Facebook Marketplace for £50, and as you can imagine, it was a little bit beaten up, but generally pretty good. Had to start a motor for the old setup. So we started off by cutting off all of the little excesses, taking off these cable ties and this little bit of a sweet tin that was holding on the exhaust along with another cable tie. Unbolt the seat is the first first step and then we took out the battery came out pretty easy not not too much issues on this front but me and dad thought we'd test it see see what voltage it had left in it and because you can't tell what we actually guessed I'll tell you we got it spot on 0.2 volts absolutely ruined dad rips off the exhaust no she's there everything is a little bit rusty and muddy at the bottom but just taking bits off bit by bit Here's the carb coming out, not, not too many issues there. Here's a place that does have some issues though, here's the swing arm. I think the bearings have just completely rotted out, so that needs a little bit of TLC. I decided to use the smallest tool I could possibly find to undo some of the key bolts holding on the engine. But I just span that around bit by bit, took out a couple of those bolts, not much issue. Here's the <laughs> spanner placed to uh, take out the brake, pushing through these bolts pulling it through the other side and there we are the engine is pretty much broken free just have to unhook the chain there but once that comes off and we would unplugged the wires managed to lift it out big lump of an engine didn't work but here's me showing how light the bike is now give it a quick bicep bicep curl if you're lucky there we go there he does it so here are all the electrical components that we're going to be putting into the pit bike now the engine's been taken out. Me and dad have wired uh, or labelled all of the wires here after painstakingly working out which was which due to a lack of diagrams. Bodged together a few of these wires to make them fit. This, is, this was filed down. So the key components we've got are the throttle currently on a pedal. Motor here, it's 1.8 kilowatts. Here's the battery, 48 volts and it's about half a kilowatt hour of capacity. It's a 1,800 watt um, motor controller. There we go. It's kind of hard to see on the, uh, it's such a small sprocket. This is the brake uh, line, so when that's connected, it will automatically stop, so you can't be braking and accelerating at the same time. It makes a lot of sense. Here's the sprocket that is gonna be going on the, the back of the pit bike. So we need to work out a way of, of getting this to work. And a free wheel. Oh yeah, no, that'll be fine. Here we've got the uh, the metal stash for brackets and stuff we're gonna make. This will probably be quite good. Also back here from ages ago, I've got an old electric skateboard. I wanna do something with at some point, but many a project. So these are the the two cardboard aided design bits. So that'll be out of metal bolted there. And then another one down there. Some bars going like that, which will bolt on the motor like, like so. Then we need a bit of a longer chain to connect that down to the back. But that's the rough plan. I've just been taking the socket off of this one so I can line up where to drill the holes in the new one. We're just gonna cut off a little bit of this um, bar so we've got a workable length. Do you wanna turn it on? <laughs> <laughs> Clean cut. Some goggles next time, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I've done as well is mark on the sprocket where we need to uh, cut so we can use it instead of this sprocket. Just yeah, if you clamp it just to the wood, possibly, because then you then you because you need to move it around. Oh, you've done it. So when we were just drilling, we had a little bit of issue with the the drill slowing down a lot because of the friction. So I've just been spraying a bit of this like WD-40 knockoff stuff on it. <laughs> that looked very dramatic as they were the sparks were hitting the ceiling. <laughs> the protective hat. Yes, it's a useful hat. 
we're going to lose a lot of heat through the um, the vice, so I'm not sure if we're going to get to the temperature route we really want. That's pretty, pretty flat. Blacksmiths, if they're working on it, would do it this way. So the belt <laughs> stays hot, but the handle stays cold. Oh. And they can still hold it. As we are professional blacksmiths. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So heat it a lot, lot quicker, and we'll get a much better bend. Precision work. Right. Oh. right, it's a bit straightening out and <laughs> rearranging. Should we hold it up against the bike and see if it's <laughs> remotely yeah. close? Yeah. <laughs> Might be for the other one. No. Yeah. I don't know, actually. No, it's for the top yeah, one. Because it, it was measured to go outside on both. Yeah, uh, I mean, it would fit. We could make it fit either, actually. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> that is how that great our work is. Yeah. <laughs> this, is this is a universal piece. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that, uh, with a bit of bending, it, I think it's going to go on the outside and inside of these yeah, perfectly. Sorry. Perfect. Sorry. I do believe it was for the top one. <laughs> it, that, it fits that one better and I think that's where I wanted it to go. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good fit. I'm just manually filing off all these extra bits that didn't quite fit. That's it, and hopefully they line up properly, he says. Dad's making some grooves on the metal bars, so then when it bends, it's exactly where we want it. So we tried that on the last one, and it seemed to work really well. The trick is to get a hot flame back off the gas it starts to smoke, which you can see about there, then introduce the uh, oxygen. The tip of the flame will be about 2,200 centigrade. Right, so cool that down. Here are the brackets that Dad's been knocking up. This first one sits here using some of the previous engine bolts. Instead of having one bar like we've got at the top here, we're gonna use the motor as a sort of structural part. So these will fit in like this and the motor can be bolted on and it should give us the, the cog in, in line with any luck with the, the back sprocket. We've got the bolts on for the motor, which is roughly mounted in the right position. But we need to find a chain because the current one's not quite long enough. So it's a couple of weeks later here and I managed to buy a new chain, two meters long, so we could just split it down into the right length. We just got to cut it here and then it's basically within tolerance. Look at that. It's actually a lot straighter than I thought it was going to be as well, considering it was eyeballed. So the, the pin bit will pop out the other end. Yeah. So now, woo, there we go. Oh, no. I'll be ready to oh, catch her. That's some good. Oh, yes. it? I guess plug it in and give it a spin. But I've got I've got high hopes for it actually. What about you, Dan? High hopes? Uh, yeah. High hopes. Positivity <laughs> is what we need. <laughs> what possibly could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> the famous last words. <laughs> we shall see. Here you can see my quick prototype knock up of a board to make sure all of the phase wires are kept apart so we don't get any short circuits. Then plugged in the whole sensor so everything spoke to its relevant part. <laughs> While I accelerate, this is actually 
reverse, so we'd, we'd be going backwards. Hopefully, by shorting this, it's going to reverse it, but my only concern is that we won't have full speed. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> right, we need to, we need to come up with a little solution. We need to flip the motor to the other side. No, we can't do that. No. I reckon, wait, let me just... Well... <laughs> let's put them out. <laughs> 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 well, okay, so we've decided that we can reverse the direction a bit through swapping any two of these phase wires and that's what a guy on YouTube said. Um, so we're gonna give that a go and hope that otherwise we're gonna be going very, very slowly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've switched over the um, green and the blue cables there. Let me take, I can take off this reverse switch. The wheel needs to spin that way. Okay, so we've finally got the motor spinning in the right direction. We've reversed the connections between the yellow and the blue, but then for the Hall effect sensor, we had to switch around the green and the yellow. Um, I'm still not 100% sure exactly why that works, but it does. When we accelerate, the wheel's going the right way. <laughs> Woo <-hoo! laughs> well, I'll cut this, mount this to the front of the frame, and then mount this to the, the plate. So the bit Dad's currently cutting is gonna make this bit of the frame connect to the battery so it's securely held on. The bit down here that I've just done is a chain sort of guard bit that stops the, the chain getting caught in a little crack that's down there. We've mounted up the throttle up here. I'm excited to see how it goes. That should line up. That'll be how it goes. Let's yeah, stop it falling off. <laughs> as we did with the bungees. <laughs> yeah, the original try was just to bungee it onto the frame, which went about as well as you'd expect. Dad's left me with the fiddly job of <laughs> putting these on. It lays flat and then pushes along. So if you can't lay it flat, then you've got to move the whole thing back. Ah, uh, it might be locked. <laughs> might not help. Oh, that's easy. Okay, so it is now time for the first test lap with the bike. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Okay, so it is the next day and we've we analysed the issue. We thought the chain was just loosening really quickly once we accelerated because it is quite a cheap chain, but it turns out it's not that cheap. It may still be a cheap chain, but the real issue is coming from the sort of the foot of the motor because we've supported it at two different points. It's allowed the foot to sort of bend. So you can see here, this foot and this foot up here, they used to be parallel, but now, this one is way down here. You can see how much it's bent from the previously parallel position, which means that these, uh, this bracket would be touching this ruler. So now we've put the motor in the vise for some crude sort of bending back. So what we're gonna get is some uh, sort of thick steel support bits that will go run between these bolts. I get the filing job and Dad gets the uh, automatic angle grinder cutting job. That's because it's my angle grinder. <laughs> <laughs> so now the two supports that we've just made are um, put in and they're going to give that quite a lot of extra, or a lot of extra strength. Beautifully 
Woohoo! So we've just pumped up the uh, the tire to find where it is. Normally, with a bicycle or something, you put it in water. You won't be able to see it on the film, but there's a little hole there, which is big enough that we could just sort of hear it and feel it. It looks like it's quite easily repairable, to be honest. So, bicycle punch repair kit it is. Puncher has been repaired. Shane looks like he's in good condition, not oh, yeah, hanging off, which is that. Chain's just as tight as it was when we started. Oh yeah. That support bracket, that's the, that was exactly what it needed. So you can see it's definitely got some torque, just breaks free, also not much grip. It handles really well because it's, <laughs> it's so light, but this has been a massively successful project in my opinion. So there it is, that is the pit bike build video. Let's give it a quick run through and explain what the, uh, the next stages are. So what's currently restricting the top speed is the battery can't put out enough current to uh, use the full sort of two kilowatts that we've got. So we need to upgrade that, buy some 18650 cells and make our own custom battery pack that we can then fit and work into a, a seat at the back. I quite like this color on the back, so we might find something similar for that. As well as sorting out a place to put the motor controller, I wanna buy a th one that can power up to three kilowatts and keep this motor, but just over power it so it's a two kilowatt motor but shove three kilowatts in it and play around with the sprocket size on the back but i think it's been a massively successful project as far as projects go on this channel this has got to be by far the best next sort of thing as well is put the put the pegs in find a way to secure them battery seat higher power and that will come out in another video thank you very much for watching this has been a really fun project and i'm hoping to do a lot more of these um so give it some love make sure to share this video and subscribe and uh, I'll see you in the next one.